everyone, it's Diane with Sew Batique, and today we are talking about our Batique linen and the Verdun t-shirt by Liesl and Company. A little bit about our Batik linen before we get started talking about the top. Um, we launched our first collection of our Batik linen earlier this year and it has been really exciting to work with um, and share different projects with you. Um, the linen is 54 inches wide and of course as with all of our fabrics it's machine washable very simple to care for so put it in your washing machine now i will say if you've worked with linen before a little trick to always remember is before you put your fabric in the washing machine take a moment to either zigzag that cut edge or just put it through your serger and do a simple overlock on the edge and it will eliminate the excessive fraying um, that you do get on the cut edge of a woven fabric like a linen. So do that before you put this in your machine, but wash your fabric, lukewarm water, extra rinse cycle. I do recommend Synthropol as your fabric wash and put it in the dryer until it's almost dry so it's a little bit damp when you take it out and then hang it up or lay it out on a bed to, to finish drying and press it up before you start cutting out your pattern. So it's so simple to care for. So let's talk a little bit about the pattern and why I selected it to be honest with you. One of the things I always look for when I am looking for a garment pattern for the batik linen is loose, is it loose fitting? Is it comfortable? Um, is it going to move on me really nicely? What is the actual pattern? And so I really like a loose fitting top or a traditional classic shirt or a pant with simple elastic or simple features. And so that's what I look for when I am choosing a pattern for the boutique linen. So this pattern is no exception to that selection process. Here is the pattern, and here's the pattern jacket for those of you who aren't familiar with this, but it is the Verdun woven t-shirt from size extra small to extra extra large. And there's, as you can see with this front picture here, there's two views. There's the sleeveless version, and there is a long sleeve version. And with each one of the views, you can either select a round neck collar or a V-neck. And in the long sleeve version that I made, I did do the V-neck and optional pocket. I didn't put the pocket on mine. Um, so I just stuck with what the image was for view B, which is the long sleeve V-neck top. And I think there's no real other features to this shirt um, except for it's designed to have a hem that is shorter in the front and longer just slightly longer in the back which is a kind of a neat feature and the sleeve so I did say sleeveless on the front jacket I actually thought it looked like it was just a short sleeve well I would call it sleeveless because we're not adding another piece of sleeve to this garment the, the sleeve for the long sleeve is added down here. So this is the actual seam line. And it is a very long sleeve. You may need to take a look at adjusting your sleeve. I had to fold it up after I um, put mine on thinking I would have the perfect sleeve length because typically I never adjust my sleeves. Um, but it is quite long. So take a look at that. There's also a bust dart because her patterns are designed for an AB cup, a C cup, or a D cup. So they're really a nice fit once you get the right fit for yourself. Okay, let's talk a little bit about sizing and yardage. As I mentioned, this pattern is for an extra small to an extra extra large. And the measurements are for a bust of 33 and a half to a 46. 
and it's good to know your hips. I, I don't think you need to worry about your waist measurement on this particular garment because it's relatively straight going down to your hip. At least that's kind of how I look at this one. Um, but you do need to pay attention to the hip measurement because it doesn't flare out like a bell would, like a bell-shaped top would. It is pretty straight. And so the hip of an extra small is a 36 and for an extra extra large is a 48 and a half. And the yardage, let's talk a little bit about yardage. Ours, the pattern here is written for 44 inch wide and 58 inch wide fabric. Ours fits right in between there. So I actually went with the yardage um, for the size that I needed for the fifth. I followed the 58 inch yardage and it worked out perfectly for myself. So I mapped my measurements and I made a large. And so for a large, I used two yards of fabric, two and a, two and a half yards of fabric for the view B, which is the long sleeve. Um, so that's a pretty good use of two and a half yards of fabric, if I would say so. Um, one thing to think about when it, I think when it comes to the yardage and when it comes to the measurements of this particular pattern, I'm always talking about ease and to know how it's going to fit on you because I really like a linen to be loose fitting. Um, I don't want it to be snug or tight anywhere. And so this pattern is written with a three inch ease. So if, let's say for example, uh, my bust is 39 and a half. I want to make sure that I am making the size that has at least three inches more of ease, which is the large. And so that fit perfect, absolutely perfect. My hip is where I needed to add just a slightly, slightly a little bit more to the hip measurement to stay within the large. And so that's what I ended up doing. So three inches, think about three inches for every one of your touch points. And, and either if you're somebody like me who works backwards, I look at my finished measurements and make sure I'm comfortable with that. And then I look at the cut size to cut based off the body measurements. So that's what I do. Um, let's see, what else should we talk about? The difficulty for this garment is, and she always uses scissors. Um, it's a one scissor out of four, which is very, very very simple. So if you're not an experienced sewist, this is a great way to get your feet wet for sure. Okay, now a little bit about the pattern and things to think about as you're going through the fit of this garment. Um, like I had mentioned earlier, I made the long sleeve version and the v-neck and it has the bust darts. So make a muslin just really quickly of the front and the back of this garment to feel comfortable with the placement of the darts. I found them to be too low. So in the next version of this, like I can even turn this one here. The dark fabric makes it really difficult for you to see the dart on here, but the dart is down here, and I know this is a mannequin, it's not anybody's true body, but it is low. And for myself, it hit just too low, so I'm gonna lift it up a little bit um, for the next version of this that I'm making. So I'll modify the pattern piece, and I think everything will be great. But just make sure that you're making the right cup size, and that your muslin fits you right before you cut this out of your favorite fabric. The neckline is a simple faced neckline. I did use interfacing, so I used the NV Silk uh, polyester fusible interfacing, and it just gave it the right amount of uh, stability. Anything stronger, and this will stand up by itself and be a little bit heavy for Arbatique linen, so be careful about that, that your weight of your interfacing matches the weight of your fabric, because we just want it to be a little bit more stable. So we stitch on our facing, and this is finished all the way around. There is a finishing stitch line, top stitched. I simply followed 
my serger line on the inside of my facing, pinned it all the way around, and then simply followed that line. And you can't even tell that it's top stitched, but that's how the facing is finished. So that's why that is really a simple way to do a basic facing. And the sleeve is, there's a shoulder seam here, and then your sleeve is simply added on, and it's a lower right on this little curve right here, but it's just a low drop down sleeve. And again, watch the length of that sleeve because if you wanna change the length, it's nice to have this taper in here down to the, the opening, but if don't simply cut off the end, make sure that you're cutting or adjusting somewhere in between so that you have the right size opening for your arm. And then I think the only other thing, this kind of caught me by surprise because I was thinking it was a simple hem and that it is hemmed, you know, we'll fold the fabric up on the front and the back. It has a little bit of a change in length here, which I really like, but the hem is actually an added piece to the pattern. So you have to cut two hem facings, one for the front and one for the back on the center fold of your fabric. And those are stitched on, folded up as a hem. So you have a facing hem, just like you have the facing at your neckline. And I have to honestly say, I have not done that before. So that was a new experience for me, but it finishes this garment perfectly and very simple to do so. So that is the Verdun woven t-shirt. How simple can it be? <laughs> so I don't know what else to say about this one, but I'm gonna make a ton of them. Just because it is simple, um, a front with a dart, a back, you put your facing in, you add your sleeves, you hem and you are ready to wear. So it's perfect. Um, what else can I say about this top? I don't think there is anything. So maybe what I'll do is, I know for this one, I also wanna make this out of our rayon, which will have a completely different drape to it because it's a different woven fabric. But I'd like to see the difference in how it drapes and how it fits. Um, between the two base cloths. So this will be fun to show you um, on another tutorial how this looks out of our rayon as well. And that will change our yardage. But on our website, we will put a fashion duo up that includes the pattern as an optional purchase because if you already have this pattern, we don't want you to buy it again. Um, but it'll include the, the fashion duo includes the fabric. So any linen of your choice, plus the inner facing for the collar or the neckline facing, and then the optional pattern, which is always going to be discounted when you buy the complete um, fashion duo together. So that was fun to do. Now, the other thing I wanna to talk to you about is, can you believe it is the end of 2022? It's crazy um, how this weekend, we're gonna be celebrating the new year. And it's been a really, really, really fun year um, at Sobatique and Bruce and I have had a blast. But there's so many things that we have planned and what we wanna do for each one of our fabric collections, whether it be the Jersey Knit, the Rayon, um, our new linen, our new canvas, and of course, our 115 inch wide boutique cotton and our nuanced gradations as well. We've got a shipment coming again of our um, various fabric collections that should be here sometime in the spring. So we're excited to share those fabrics with you as well. Um, but before I get ahead of myself, I wanna talk some more about the projects that we have planned for the Batik Linen. I Let's start with this. I previously, and I have not finished this, I previously washed up yardage of, and it was the Phoenix Twilight Blue. Um, 
I washed up yardage for pants. I really have to make these pants and now I don't know which one to do. But I've had this. Um, so How 7 has this free range slack pattern and it is calling my name for linen. I mean, look at this pants. It just looks so simple, so relaxing, so fun to make. And this is what, this is what I washed the fabric up to make and have not finished it. Then we um, purchased the Mitchell pants, the trousers by Closet Core. And I now don't know which one I wanna make, but I suppose I should make them both. But isn't this a cute style? And I really wanna get into making um, pants and things that are not your traditional top or jacket or skirt or dress. And um, so this is gonna challenge me a little bit this next year and I think it will be fun to do. And, and I think I'll do more of a sew along for some of these because I think it's fun to go through the steps. Not everybody makes pants and I just really, there's been this whole, whole um, uh, fad, I don't know if it's a fad, but everybody making jeans. And I just think that is the neatest thing. And I have seen some amazing patterns out there. But for myself, the first thing I'm gonna do are pants out of our base cloth, our fabric and linen. Perfect, perfect, perfect for one of these two patterns. The next top and, or, and dress, but I think I'm gonna make the top out of our linen is the, and I'm never gonna say this right, Cielo, I believe it is how it's pronounced, um, top. And this looks to be a very simple top to make. Again, it is one triangle out of five. So that looks pretty simple to me. And it just looks like a simple top with a dart, with short sleeve or long sleeve. And it might have a little bit of fullness and a little bit of detail in the shoulder that I think will be fun to make. So again, this will be out of linen. And yes, it's written for both fabric requirements of a 45 inch and a 48. So our linen will fit right in between there. And then a pattern I have had for a long time and I've been meaning to make for a long time. And it is the cottage shirt. Look at that shirt, how comfortable. And um, I think this can be layered with another shirt underneath it for cooler weather like we're having right now. But the cottage shirt is, I guess what you would call a loose fitting camp shirt. It's perfect. And I think that, again, my definition of linen, it just this just reads for linen. And I'm gonna select two different fabrics to make this out of because the bottom or the hemline, there's too much, not too much glare on there but looks like it could be really fun to make an accent out of. And I need to um, be a little bit more creative with some of my garments and not stick to one fabric all the time. I think it will be fun to, to mix and match some of our fabric choices. So those are a few of the things and garments I'm gonna make um, this next year out of our linen. So I really want to take a quick minute to thank you all for a very, very wonderful 2022. And for all of your great comments, this has been a year for me to um, get on YouTube and to feel comfortable training and sharing. And I think it's been a really great way for us to show you our fabrics um, as live as we can without being you know, side by side. And I appreciate that so very much. And I thank you for all your comments and keep them coming. We just love hearing what your interests are and where you'd like us to focus. And um, so we do appreciate that so very much. So we wanna wish you a very, very, very happy new year coming up. And um, we will see you in 2023.